It's a way to make financial education and what's going on with money more accessible to people because I'm realizing how important that is to me because the more and more I talk to people, the more the people listen to what I say, the more I hear, oh my God, I wish I would have learned this when I was younger. I'm like, yeah, I know, me too. And, and so it's like, it's important for me to help get that message out there because yeah. it, it's so needed. You know, we, we talk about, especially in Detroit, food deserts where there's areas people can't get access to healthy food. But this money desert, this financial education desert, is it's so widespread. It's global. Where none of us, you know, I have a lot of friends who are doctors now. They're working their butt off. They're also paying the highest taxes. They're also trying to figure out how to afford my lifestyle because when you go and become a doctor, you make a good salary. But guess what? Now you have big student loans you got to pay back. Yeah. And now a lot of times you want to live that doctor lifestyle. You want to have the G-Wagon, you want to have the Ranger over, you want to have the nice car, you want to have the nice home. So now you graduate, you're 28, 29 years old, you have half a million dollars of student loans, you got to pay back, you're making a few hundred grand a year, but you're working your butt off, it's very stressful, and now you have all these new expenses, your homes, your cars. And how much does that 500,000 in student loan actually become after 30 years of paying it off? Oh man, yeah, over a million. Really? Yeah. So it's really, it's it, not it, a half a million dollars on loans, it's a million yeah. dollars on loans that you're paying off for 30 years. Yeah. Right? Exactly. With the interest. And let me, I wanna add on that point because the thing about student loans, you know, we talk about who do you trust, where do you get your information from, right? Everybody, the system says, go to school, get a degree. If we don't have money to get a degree, what do you do? Get student loans. I started looking deeper, right? You start asking the question, why? The number one liability for young people nowadays are student loans. And the government always talks about how we have this huge student loan epidemic, this huge student loan problem. But the number one asset on the United States balance sheet are student loans. Really? You, I mean, I, this blew my mind. You go to Google, search this. The assets on the United States balance sheet, number one asset. You'll see student loans are their number one asset. So on one hand, we have people talking about the importance of higher education, the importance of going into debt to get your degree. And then at the same time, that's your number one asset. It's holding so many people back from buying a home, from living their lives, from doing things, investing their money, yet at the same time, it's keeping the government rich. Wow. This is where, you know, that mindset, you have to start thinking a little bit differently and start asking questions to the status quo, to the system, to the way things are done. And you know, if you're like me, you're gonna, you're gonna get a little angry. You're gonna get frustrated because you're gonna realize, what the heck? Why are people not taught this? Why are we not taught how to use our money? Because nowadays, people are paying 50 grand a year to get a good college degree, but at the same time now, YouTube is decentralizing education. Free. For free. And you can learn from anybody you want. If you don't like the way that I sound, hit the X button, go to somebody else, right? <laughs> exactly. And it doesn't cost you a penny, you can learn from anybody, people who are actually doing what they teach. And what do you wish we taught everyone from the ages of 10 to 20? Sure. Five different things around money. First thing would be, what is money? Mm -hmm. Because money as we know it is fake. Our dollars are just pieces of paper. I grew up thinking that our paper dollars are like the holy grail. You wanna save this money because it is the most valuable thing there is. As I became older, I started to realize that that's not the case. Our paper dollars are just pieces of paper. It's fiat currency, which means it's issued by the government and the value is backed through the strength of the government. Now, we're lucky here that the United States is the world's superpower. We have the world's strongest military. We have the world's strongest economy, but we can't stay on top forever. And you know, inflation is when the value of your dollar goes down. So these dollars, which Many of us think that if we hoard this, we'll become wealthy, save your money to wealth, is actually keeping you poor, wow. and it's making you poorer each and every day. So the first thing you have to understand is what is money? Second thing you have to understand is what do wealthy people work for? And most of us, the majority of us are taught to work to get a job and climb that corporate ladder, but wealthy people are doing something completely different. They're working to own the corporate ladder. They're working for something called equity. And this thing really blew my mind because wealthy people are not working for that paycheck. They're working to own a piece of the company. That way they can get a piece of the profit equity. Yeah. The third thing is that you have to think bigger. 
I know I grew up thinking that somebody who looks like me, somebody who's brown, somebody who wears a turban, somebody who didn't have entrepreneur investor parents could go out and do this because you, know, you think that somebody like me can't do this. My parents also told me that I couldn't do it. I didn't know anybody wow. doing it. I didn't know any investors. But you have to be the one to take that first step. Mm -hmm. And once you start to take the first step, you're gonna learn and see the second step. Then you take the second step and you're like, oh, I can start a hundred dollar investment here. You don't have to start with you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, start with a hundred dollars. Apps on the internet make it so much more accessible. Right. But anything is possible. If you live in America, you speak English, you have more opportunities than really anybody else in the world. People will literally risk their lives risk their lives to come to this country because there's opportunity here. And so if you're here, you have the ability to understand what you and I are saying, and you have that technology to do it, you're blessed. Yeah. Now, what do you do with this, right? You, you have to go out and start learning. You have to go out and start doing. And then the next thing that you have to do. Number four. Number four is you have to understand the concept of debt because we live in this consumer culture. And it, it's interesting where you know, we want to live this flex lifestyle, right? I want to show off on Instagram. I want to show off my new car, my new Chanel Gucci purse. And we, we kind of get caught up where I need to live a certain lifestyle that where people can think that I'm rich. But what you're doing now is you're living broke. Right. Making everybody else rich so people think you're rich. <laughs> right. you're, you're product rich. You have a lot of nice stuff, but you're, you're broke. And so when you live that type of lifestyle, you are the reason why Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel are making so much money, but it's keeping you broke. The richest person in the world, sometimes he's the second, sometimes he's the third, is the CEO of Louis Vuitton. No way, really? Yeah, Bernard Arnault. And why, how did he get there? Because everybody wants to look rich. The fifth thing you wish people learned uh, from 10 to 20 years old about money. You have to be willing to make mistakes, take risks, and start. And th this one is hard, and it sounds simple, but a lot of people that I know, a lot of people, they are so hesitant to making that first investment because what if I do something wrong? What if I make a mistake? What if my investment goes down? And so the simple thing That's that happened I'm, to me multiple times. Yeah, but you learn every time, right? Yeah. It's, it's your, your tuition, it's your yes. real tuition. Uh, and you have to be willing <laughs> yeah. to try things because if you don't, you're gonna get stuck in the game of what if. Uh -huh. What if I lose money? Uh -huh. What if it doesn't work out? Well, what if it goes up? 